Well, Build a Better Fairview is a, a new organization that uh, really is a, a bunch of community members and community agencies that all got together to organize so that they could really be a voice for the community in the Fairview Mall redevelopment. Um, it's a big thing to, to talk about a neighborhood where there is no residential because that means there's no, there's no people who live right there right now to talk to. And so they said, we're the people who live around it and the agencies that serve around it. And we want to have a hand in how the new neighborhood is designed. I don't know that everyone is familiar with Build a Better Fairview, but we are a group of service providers in the area as well as community members who are uh, concerned or have concerns about this development and so we want to have a platform for those concerns to be heard so we've been working with i know many of the folks from cadillac fairview we've been working with the city councilor's office um, as well as the city planner's office uh, and as we go into today's pr uh, presentation, I just ask that we all reflect on our shared responsibilities to our communities and our community members uh, to create thriving communities that not just that don't just benefit, you know, the, the, the people with the most power in our societies and that it really um, they, they do help those regardless of socioeconomic background. I'm Shelley Carroll, most of you know uh, the city councillor for the area. Uh, our MP is with us as well, and Doug is with us. Uh, this is a big deal what we're talking about tonight. <laughs> this is what's going on. This project, what is it exactly? Well, this is something that's happening throughout Toronto. A lot of the uh, shopping malls that were built in the 60s um, and, and into the 70s, uh, they were built in such a way that they were designed that you just drive there and get inside and everything happens inside. And the city has gone through a process over the last number of years to look at, you know, that's wasted space. First of all, too much paved surface. It's not really good for the environment the way it's designed. We're building subways that run right by these malls, so why is everyone driving there? So we're rethinking them ourselves. And now the owners of those malls, Cadillac Fairview is just one of the many uh, mall builders and operators that is looking at if we take away our surface parking and we deal with that some other way, is there room to build housing? And so this application is about surrounding Fairview Mall with additional housing. Toronto has the demand for housing. All three levels of government are working together to address that. At the federal level, government has lots of money, billions of dollars, to uh, boost the supply. So I think what we hear tonight uh, was a lot of... Um, you know, constructive ideas, but what I didn't hear tonight is that not in my back here, which is a good sign, mm -hmm. right? So we recognize that Toronto needs more housing. We welcome with open arms so a new residents, new families are coming to Down Valley North. We certainly have uh, the, uh, you know, whether it's the mall or the school or the employment opportunity, we have those attractants here. And I think uh, it's pretty rare to find, especially where Fairview Mall is, to find a place that's close to the highway, close to the subway, close to all kinds of social infrastructure, and close to very welcoming neighborhood like Parker Forest. So uh, I'm very pleased to be here and uh, just learn what people are thinking. Build a Better Fairview um, is not just the members. It's, um, we've done a lot of outreach, a lot of surveys, um, and gotten feedback from this community. So our recommendations are 20% of housing to be affordable. The Toronto Community Benefits Network is here today with Build a Better Fairview um, because we believe in community benefits. That's what we fight for. That's what we want to see um, all around the city, um, especially here. This is a huge development. This is a huge developer. Um, and we want to see community benefits um, as part of this development. The community, the community has come forward with a lot of ass. Um, we've even seen that in a report that has been produced. They're asking for a lot of things. They're very clear in their ass. And we want to see what the developer and what the city um, is going to do in response to those asks from the community. What is the percentage you think you will get in it for the uh, affordable housing? Well, you know, the, the, uh, 
the process of figuring out the percentage is, is ongoing right now. There's really a very low bar to, to meet provincial policy. You really only have to do 1% on a large site development like this, which you know, might mean getting, you know, maybe 20 units in a, in a uh, complex that will have 800 new units of housing, maybe 20 of them, middle, middle of the road affordable, not even deeply affordable. That's not very much. And this is a highly profitable place to be building housing, right on top of a subway, surrounded by amenities. We think that opens the door to talking about more. Right across the highway, we have buildings that were approved under a different policy where we'll see 7% of the units. So, you know, 80, 90, 100 units in a complex just like this one. We'd like to see something similar here. And fortunately, there are federal government dollars to help make that work so that it doesn't take away all the profit from the developer. He's still going to make money on, on 700 of these housing units. They're going to sell for good prices. We'd like him to help us make it affordable for some who need that help. What will be the part that uh, Toronto uh, Community Benefits is going to play in, um, in this project in terms of giving people opportunities of job? So um, that's a really good question and a lot of people are thinking and wondering about that. So definitely that is um, something that has to be negotiated with the developer um, and the community and TCBN would, have, would be happy to be at the table with that. Um, we would love to see good jobs from this, this development. Um, we're talking about um, tall towers that are being built. Um, that's construction that will provide good jobs for a number of years. Um, for the skilled trades. Um, so we definitely want, uh, if the developer could commit to community benefits even, of having a certain percentage of local hires, equity hires, during um, all phases of this development, that would be an amazing thing that they, they could agree to. Just as Councillor Carroll was speaking to, uh, we are going to have a presentation from Build a Better Fairview, who did a lot of the legwork to make sure that all of you folks were here in this room so we could hear directly from you. After that, we're going to go into a facilitated question and answer. So I ask that unless called upon, you save your questions until that question and answer period. So if you have a phone or a pen and paper, just try to keep track of those. What are some of those major points raised by the uh, participant today here? Well, it comes down to, to put it simply, it's the, the question of are we just building buildings around them all or are we creating a neighborhood around them all? And if it's a neighborhood, that's the best result, but that means you've got to, you've got to design how the pedestrians will get around them all differently than they do now. There are lots of problems today. We'd like to fix the problems and, in fact, anticipate what could be problems when there are residents on the site. We also need to look at there being amenities because the centre we're in today for Parkway Forest is pretty busy all the time. So if you double the population in the neighbourhood, we need more community amenities, more sports fields, uh, more green space. So it's all of those neighbourhood amenities that have to be worked out or else we're really just plopping buildings down in a parking lot. A few years ago, Canada adopted federal legislation, the National Housing Strategy Act, that actually recognizes that housing is a human right in Canada. And it implements that right, um, and it commits the federal government to using a human rights approach in all of its housing policy. We saw you doing a presentation. What was it about? I was presenting about the fact that Canada uh, five years ago recognized that housing is a human right and implemented that in federal legislation for the first time. So back in the 1970s, Canada signed some international treaties that recognized the human right to adequate housing, but this is the first time we have domestic legislation that confirms, yes, adequate housing is a human right. It's just important for people to know that it is their human right to have adequate housing. Uh, I think a lot of us, you know, we think, well, if we can't afford our home, that's our fault and there's something we should be doing differently. But no, that's not the case. Our governments actually have a responsibility. 
Canada is a wealthy country. It could provide and make sure that everyone here has adequate housing. Um, and it, it needs to do so. When people understand that, when they understand that it's their human right, they're going to keep pushing like the residents here are doing today. When they see new housing being built in their neighborhood, they're going to say some of that has to be affordable for lower income people. It has to be accessible for seniors and people with disabilities. We have to make sure the conditions are decent and that tenants can be secure in their homes. So all of those are parts of what makes adequate housing and it's really up to the people to to claim that and and make sure that their governments follow through. If you live in this neighborhood or you're deeply interested in this thing and you, you aren't on my e-blast, um, then you may get it. If you've signed up at a consultation and given your email address to planning, you may get it. But if you want to be sure you're going to get it, sign up for my e-blast. If this is the only thing you care about, then every week when you see that thing on Thursday, delete it until it says development update. <laughs> and if there's a development update, that's what it's going to say. I'm one of those people who lack maybe tomorrow uh, to profit from those affordable houses. What to do? For the residents, we have many, many residents surrounding Fairview Mall who need affordability right now. And so we're saying to them, you need to get in the system. We want you to make sure that you have an application on the system. Whether you're looking for deeply affordable social housing or just some of this middle level affordable housing so that you're, you know, instead of paying 3000 a month for a small unit, you might be looking at paying, you know, 1800 a month. That's still a lot of money. Yeah. But if we can take a few people that are, are really at risk of becoming homeless because they can't make market rent anymore, this helps us stop that vicious cycle we have of people, you know, scraping together first and last month's rent to make 3000 a month and then just not being able to make a go of it until finally they're in an eviction cycle and, and becoming homeless. We need a lot of that, that middle range affordable housing to make, make space in the housing spectrum. Uh, if you have uh, a last word, uh, what can it be? Look at the camera. Yes, I think this was a very successful event. Again, the community was able to come out and um, just be in the same room with the developers. The developers came out of the boardroom and they came into the community. Um, and then also the city as well, city staff and the councillor was here. So we had a lot of um, stakeholders at this meeting tonight. Um, a lot was shared. And we hope that these things are taken back by the city staff, by the developers, by the province, and that we can see some gains in all these areas, like affordable housing, parkland, better streetscapes, and all these community ass community benefits for the Fairview Mall development. We hope to um, really um, continue working with the local community uh, to make sure that um, people who normally aren't uh, involved or represented in these uh, discussions about what the future, um, the large scale visions of the future of our neighborhood is going to be, um, uh, continue to voice their concerns. Um, and that we're, on the other hand, we're going to kind of keep an eye on the negotiations between the city uh, and the developer to keep them accountable for, uh, to um, what the local community wants. Housing is a human right, and if we all come together to push for that, our governments are going to have to realize and make sure that people have it. Very pleased to be here and in this consultation about a future project taking place in Fairview Mall. Uh, looks very promising, and I think uh, we have the right leadership. Uh, we saw uh, the city representative here, the developer here, and the conversation is very uh, warm and civilized and very constructive and that's uh, that's how things are done here in Long Valley North. Well simply that uh, we're, we're also very grateful this applicant has agreed to keep working with the community and they don't have to. Provincial policy says they could just go to the province right now but they're still talking to the community and that's a good sign. Thank you.